Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Tonight, we discuss the Scott Hall E60 feature, recap Raw Smackdown Bound for Glory, uh, make our picks for the Vengeance pay-per-view, and special guest, the bloodthirsty vixen Amanda, joins us. All that and more coming up on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Stay tuned, we got... All that and more coming up. If you like, please join us on the ITMI Radio chat room. That's itmiradio.com backslash TTW. That happens to be the show initials. So I'm definitely going to be kicking off tonight's show by talking about the Sky Hall story. We'll get into all that plus more coming up. In a matter of moments, I'm using Ustream and I'm using the Sim broadcaster simultaneously so that I can do my highlights for the interviews and stuff. I've been using Ustream for quite a while. So if you listen to uh, Chilling with Jeff and Kenny C, which the other show I do, then you know I use Ustream a lot every week. Uh, so the wrestling people or anyone that's just listening to the first time. Y'all know what I do. I use Ustream and I use Sam Broadcaster simultaneously. I've been doing this since February for chilling and later on the wrestling show. Right now the encoder is about to end and it's my cue to talk via talk player. With that said, hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Triple Threat Wrestling Radio right here on itmiradio.com. Just finished off the Red Bastard Sports Show moments ago. I'm going to go ahead and get Jeff on the line and we can uh, get this show on the road. I'm calling Jeff via Skype right now. Uh, we got plenty of stuff to discuss. We have the... Uh, What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. Um, so tonight's show, we're going to recap Raw, SmackDown, Bound for Glory. Of course, the Vengeance pay-per-view is coming up this Sunday night. We'll make our picks for that. Um, we got an interview tonight with a girl named Amanda f from the West Coast. She joins us bottom of the hour, Bloodthirsty Vixen, so the nickname. I'm definitely going to ask her what made her name herself that. Yeah, please do. <laughs> How convenient, someone with, with a nickname like that with Halloween coming up. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to ask. I bet your sweet ass you're going <laughs> to. Before we go any further, I want to start off, and y'all know I've been doing this for the last two weeks now. And I will continue to do so for the remainder of October. We got one more Thursday left of October. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And one of our former guests, Tara Calloway, got this takedown breast cancer project going on. When you can donate money or purchase a autographed picture of her. And all proceeds goes to the Susan G. Coleman Foundation. For more info, you can check out her website at www.theterracalorie.com. That's T-E-R-R-A-C-A-L-A-W-A-Y.com. Uh, -A -A That's her official website. You can learn more info about it. Take down breast cancer. Go out, donate, uh, purchase a picture. Do what you got to do. You got a week and a half left. Halloween is the last day for donations and purchases. So I want to start the show that way. And I want to get into the first topic of the evening. I wonder how many of you watched the E60 show last night when they had the story on Sky Hall. No, I didn't see it. Yeah, they had the story, and I'm going to post the link in the room. At least I hope. Uh, you won't, I don't know if you can. Send it to me via Skype. Okay. Well, I'm going to send it to Jeff, and then he'll post it in the room, and y'all can watch it amongst yourselves so last night ESPN show called E60 they had this story on Scott Hall 
And y'all know him as Razor Ramon, former on WWE, WCW, TNA wrestler. Talked about his life, talked about his wrestling career, uh, talked about other things. And the, the guy was a wreck. I mean, we all, a lot of us, if you watch Scott Hall throughout the years, especially since his prime days have come and gone, you know the guy has had a lot of troubles with his marriage, with his wrestling career, with his life. I watched the whole thing yesterday. Uh, it was compelling and it was heartbreaking. The man had a lot of prescription drugs. He had uh, been arrested four times. Did you not know that he was in, he that during his wrestling career, in and out, he went to rehab ten times, and that the uh, WWE financially tried to help him out. Uh, spent a, they probably spent more money on him after his career than they did during his career. You know, the guy doesn't even look like the dude that he once was. He looks, he looks just old and banged up. And they also, and Scott Hall in this segment admitted that he used steroids. Now, steroids wasn't a big deal back in his day. You know, WWE now has the drug testing, which is why a lot of wrestlers have been suspended as of late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He's, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, uh, even though we all know wrestling is staged and scripted, but at least they shows that they do take their wrestlers uh, health and well-being seriously. They take it well. They take it real seriously. They don't want no steroid people coming in and out. Or at least look like they on steroids, you know. But you think about it, Scott Hall. This was before his wrestling career. He was charged with a second-degree murder, and the case got dismissed because of lack of evidence and that was before um, his wrestling career began he started off in the AWA the American Wrestling Alliance I think that's what, what it stood for and then he first joined the WWF at the age of 33 years old that's a pretty late to start your pro career that's a pretty late age if you ask me you know, nowadays wrestlers get their start at the eight in their early twenties, late twenties, and early thirties maybe. But age thirty three, that seemed like a very old age to start your wrestling career. But he had a lot of great wrestling career moments, including the match he had with Shawn Michaels. Um, they they even showed a part where he had was in the hospital, right? And two days later, he flew to Massachusetts to headline an indie wrestling show. He looked like a wreck. And the promoter, they had a decision to make. Either give give out refunds because obviously it was sold out. Over 480 people were in attendance. You know, give out refunds. I mean, Scott Hall is in no condition to be in the show or just go with the show, see what happens. You know, and I guess they didn't want to give the money back, so they they they, let, they pretty much let Scott Hall went through the show the way that he was, and he, it was terrible. Just incredible, who was a former ECW wrestler, was a part of that segment, and he said that it was the worst experience he's been a part of in his wrestling career. And they also showed the part when his son Cody Hall trying to follow his father's footsteps. Now, he's a good kid. You know, never gets in trouble. He really wants to follow his father's footsteps. You know, just as long as he doesn't end up like his father, he'll be okay. He's a bright kid. Has a bright future. So if you can, Jeff posted the link on there. Go check it out. Scott Hall story on ESPN show E60. It is 18 minutes long. You can watch it at your own time if you want. So there's your link right there. Now, I want to get to the Raw and SmackDown recap. This past Monday night, history was made. Raw did their first ever televised show in Mexico City. 
Dead Wheel. Was that show was that show taped? Yes, it was. I thought so. Yes, they taped. They did the shows tapings last weekend. They did it Saturday and Sunday, right? Yeah, for Raw and SmackDown. SmackDown's taped regardless, but yeah, Raw was taped this past Monday night, which is why WWE wrestlers pretty much got a couple of days off leading up to the Vengeance pay per view. Right. But the main event was Roberto Del Rio in his hometown teaming up with the Kit Kat bar Michael Cole against good old JR Jim Ross and uh, John Cena when uh, the winner gets to pick the stipulation for the WWE title match of Vengeance. Of course good old JR with his own version of the ankle lock I thought that was a funny way to end the match. I would have beat the crap out of Cole if I got my hands on him. I'm telling you, man. I mean, who doesn't want to beat the crap out of Michael Cole? It was good for one night just to see him just get embarrassed. It was good. Now, Cena, since his team won, he got to pick the stipulation. And instead of telling uh, Derek Wheel what the match is going to be, he showed him what the match is going to be. It will be a last man standing match for the WWE title so uh, this will be their wheels he's he's going through a lot of firsts this year he's went through his first Hell in a Cell match he went through his first ladder match now he's going through his first uh, last man standing match so this has been a year of first for Roberto Del Rio uh, so this will be his first title defense since winning the go to Hell in a Cell and may I remind you, this is the second uh, pay-per-view of the month. Yeah, I know. Second pay-per-view of the month. So uh, that's coming up. Also, the Triple H storyline took a different turn this past Monday night. And I was waiting for the immigration thing to happen. And that's what happened to Triple H. Uh, CM Punk had a match against uh, The Miz, I believe. And the match got was paused by John Laronitis, brought in a couple of Mexican people. That guy's got to go, man. Uh, Laronitis? Yeah, he's got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Fozzie he's says... He's got to go. I can't stand that son of a bitch. Yeah. He's... Oh, that's cool. Mil Mascaras is going to be a WWE Hall of Famer? Yeah, that is correct. He will be... Beautiful. In... He's going to be inducted to... That happens to be uh, Del Rio's uncle. That's his uncle. Really? I always liked Mil Mascaras. Yeah, he's a Lucha Libre legend. Uh, WWE legend as far as I'm concerned. And um, he's the first person to be inducted into the 2012. See, normally... I can't stand Albert Del Rio. <laughs> I hate that bitch. Fozzie, obviously not a... I hate Del Rio. She should not be champion, period. I shouldn't be. Well, I can't, I, I, you know what? Since it is Del Rio's first ever, uh, uh, what is it, last man standing match? Yeah, he won it? his first ever cage match. I, yeah. They might just let him win this one, too. <laughs> it, it, is a, it is possible. His first title reign was sort of quiet. You know, he was just, it, it was quiet as far as he didn't get that much of a buzz. That's obviously because of CM Punk and Triple H feud. And speaking of Triple H and CM Punk, how about that shit, huh? They're gonna be teaming up at Vengeance to take on Miz and our truth who were reinstated by that guy John Laronitis, who sounds like he has a sinus infection. That guy should be get that guy should get his ass kicked. He's gonna get his ass kicked uh, at some point, but they're just gonna let him look like he's the big boss, and and maybe White Well Survivor Series he will get his. Yeah, but let me ask you a question. Triple H is still the CEO, right? The COO, not right? Not anymore. Not in the storyline. Well, that, that's not true because on Monday night, Cole said that Triple H is still the COO, but he's not the general manager. Well, Cole's a moron. Obviously, he's not paying attention to the storyline because storyline, if you're just looking at it in the storyline view, he's no longer the COO. He's just... He's pretty well, much see, a wrestler. Even John Laurinaitis said, I'm the executive vice president of talent research and the <laughs> interim 
whatever the hell he yeah, says. Yeah, interim, interim general manager. general manager. He doesn't say anything about being the COO. So maybe Triple H is still the COO. He's just not in charge of uh, uh, Monday Night Raw anymore. Bottom, bottom line is he's no longer in charge of the day-to-day -day relations. That goes to Laronitis. See, I don't think that's true. I think he's in Laronitis is in charge of Monday Night Raw, oh. and that's it. And, if, and one of these days, Triple H is going to beat the crap out of him and say, listen, I'm your boss. You're fired. Get the hell out of here. Let the board appoint somebody else. And if Triple H was in charge, he wouldn't be kicked out of wall this past And also, Monday night. Vince McMahon said, your services as the general manager are no longer needed here at Raw. He never said anything to him about being the COO. Well, they probably got, you know, it's, it's pretty confusion at this point. But, uh... Triple H don't have to worry about making tough decisions. I mean, he finally gets to get his hands on Miz and our truth. You know, no. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. And can he and CM Punk get along? That's the question. Miz and Truth, you know, they get along pretty well. I call them the Ebony and Ivory of the WWE. Although there's another Ebony and Ivory, as in Air Boom, not Air Boom. Yeah, it is yeah, Air Boom. Boom. Yeah, yeah, they are Ebony and Ivory too, but yeah, they're the tag team champions. No, but I believe Miz and our truth are the Ebony and Ivory because they actually sing. <laughs> yes, they you do. You suck. You suck. Yeah, you guys do suck. They went from what's up to shut up to you suck. Um, yeah. That that is and Miz being the hype man. I mean, are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying, but they just need to just. Just stick to the truth shall set me free and play his music or or Miz music and just be done with it. And I like how they beat the crap out of who was it the other night, Monday Night Wrong? Who they Punk. Yeah, they beat They beat a punk, then yeah. they walked out, then they ran back in and then the referees came in and they put their hands up like, Okay, we're leaving and then, Yeah. You know, they need to get their ass beat bad Sunday night. Bad. Well uh, I wish it was a no disqualification so Triple H can bring out the fucking sledgehammer. <laughs> I think he's going to bring the sledgehammer regardless. It's just a matter of timing. Referee gets knocked out. Then it's all game for Triple H. Uh, so, before Monday night, there was only three matches scheduled for Vengeance. Now there's three Isn't more that matches. that the way it always is with those pricks? Yeah, that's, it's always, they always get two, three matches, and then they add more. and they, Now six matches scheduled. Three matches has been added to Vengeance. Uh, we're probably going to add a fourth one, Sheamus versus Christian. They probably will announce that tomorrow night on SmackDown. Uh, speaking of SmackDown tomorrow night, uh, Sin Cara versus Sin Cara. Again? And it will be a mask versus mask match. So who loses got to take their mask yeah, off? Yeah, lose, loser got to take the mask well, off. See, that I might watch. Uh, and uh, Alberto Del Rio is going to be there tomorrow night as well since he's in his hometown of Mexico City. He's going to go against the big show, 101. And, uh, speak you know Mark Anthony's going to be hanging around there. Mark Henry, yeah. Uh, three matches Three matches has been scheduled for uh, three more matches, I should say. It's going to be Randy Orton taking on Cody Rhodes. And the Intercontinental Championship will not be put on the line. That's bullshit. <clears throat> I don't think... Uh, I. That's because Cody Rose is going to lose. Well, that's because Wendy Owen is still a main event caliber guy. And, well, that's because and Cody he still Rose wants is going to be lose. in the And he still wants to be in the World Heavyweight title picture. So, I think that's why that they're not putting the Intercontinental title on the line. Uh, I Wendy think Owen, that means Randy Orton's going to win. Also... Let's see. Beth Phoenix takes on Eve Torres for the Divas Championship. So uh, Kelly Kelly's running out of title chances. Now her BFF gets a shot. Um, so yeah, and Eve Torres wins. She'll become the first ever three-time Divas Champion. And thanks to Sticky Icky Vicky Guerrero, her clients... Jack Swagger, who just became a father, by the way, in real life, teaming up with U.S. champion Dolph Ziggler to take Can on... Can you imagine having that dude as your father? The guy can't even speak right, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah, he got the speech impediment. I know. 
um, Ziggler and Swagger will take on Air Boom for the tag team titles. So Lucky yeah, I'm not a wrestler because every time I'd see him, I'd make fun of him. <laughs> I would man. every time. See, I I would. I just make fun of the way he talks all the time. You Swag- little, little baby over there, eh? little baby. Swagger and Swagatash. You little baby, you can't talk right the little cat. Baby. Since when did Sylvester the cat became a wrestler? Yeah, I'd be all up his ass <laughs> and shit, just annoying the hell out of him. And uh, oh, yeah. now, I'm okay. surprised they haven't made that a storyline yet. Well, they Swagger has been made fun of because of his speech and because of the way he talked. He has been made fun of before, over the way he talked, just not it's as just, often. That, that, should, that should be just a continuous thing. <laughs> You want to continue a continuous storyline? That's it right there. Yeah. So um, another thing to look out for: SmackDown made history last week with his 634th episode. Now, why is that number such a big deal? Because they they passed Gunsmoke as the second longest one in weekly Epixonic TV show in history. What's well, at number one? goes to Monday Night Raw. They had their 960th episode last week. <laughs> what year did Monday Night Raw start? Somewhere in the 1990, early 1990s. At least... Nah, really? Yeah, they started in the 1990s. I mean, and the only other active show that's on the top 10 is The Simpsons. They have a 6 or number 7. But that makes them the longest running animated TV show. So, and Ebo says, Cody Rose and Swagger should be a tag team. Of course, you never understand what WTF they're saying. Well, you can understand Cody Rose better than Swagger. At least he talks okay. He just talks, he just talks in the deranged way. Cody Rose with that mask on his face and that skinny intercontinental title. I'd like to see... Orton beat the crap out of him with that mask. It's funny. When is he going to take the mask off? Talking about having that face surgery because Rey Mysterio hit him with the 619 back in January. When is he going to take the mask off? Okay, you can't no, no, no. you can't have that mask forever. I've seen basketball players wear masks like that and they don't have it on forever. Well, except for Richard Hamilton of the Detroit Pistons, but that's just here and there. Uh, yeah, and uh, Jack Swagger tried to sing the national anthem at the Monday Night Wall. Made me ashamed of being an American for that particular moment. Uh, <laughs> seriously, why does he wear that shit? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that is a good question. It's not just why he... I I guess it's a good fit to him. Part of the character development. You know, but at some point, he's going to have to take that mask off. You know, Michael Cole keeps saying it's okay by the board of directors for him to wear that mask. And yet, he when uses... Michael Cole gets hit with that mask, he'll want that fucking thing off, too. <laughs> There's a lot... That's rumors that Booker T maybe won't be in the announcer booth for long. He may get into wrestling. He may end up wrestling against Cody Rhodes. Because if you know if you watch SmackDown every single week when Cody Rhodes is there having a match, one of the baggers always gives him a, a bag on the announcer table. And Booker T's not taking that very kindly, so that may lead to Booker T coming back into the wrestling ring at some point. Booker T can wipe that little dude up. <laughs> you know that, right? Yeah, he can. He can. I mean, he's a six-time world champion. I mean... Yeah, but look how much taller and bigger he is. Yeah. Booker T's kind of tall. I don't think he's that tall. That's what tall. I'm talking about. He's taller and bigger. Yeah, than he's taller than Rhodes. He's definitely taller than Rhodes. That's for sure. Yeah. Cody Rhodes looks like a stick figure. Uh, so, there you go on that segment. Um, other WWE news, of course, John Cena's movie, The Reunion, hitting theaters tomorrow. Uh, it's, it's like an action slash comedy film, and uh, it's only going to be on theaters for a couple of weeks. 
and it should come out in the DVDs in sometime in November. Uh, so yeah, that's a lot of, and it's interesting because last week you talked about there was a DX reunion uh, between Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Um, and it's going to be in Shawn Michaels' hometown of San Antonio this Sunday night. So let the speculation begin on whether Shawn Michaels is going to make an appearance or not. Or maybe he'll be involved in the uh, Triple H and CM Punk versus Miz and Truth match. Who knows? Maybe he will. You know, he's in his hometown of San Antonio. You know, maybe, maybe he'll be the special guest referee. <laughs> that would be beautiful. Yeah, Miz. You know, CM Punk and Triple H knows that if they want to put their differences to the side, they got to take care of Miz and Truth. Well, they got a common goal. They They can't stand each other. And yet, they can't stay Miz and Truth. Right, so they're going to beat the crap out of Miz and Truth first. You know, I mean, they've already beat the crap out of each other. And this is interesting, Triple H, this is only his third match this year. Uh, WrestleMania, Night of Champions, and now Vengeance. With Triple H no longer in charge of the day-to-day -day operations, now this means Triple H comes back as, a, as an active wrestler, perhaps? No, it's a possibility. And no, I think he's just going to do pay-per-views. <laughs> yeah, that that does appear to be the twin. You know, he's he's been he's only wrestled in pay-per-views this year. He hasn't been a wall or he hasn't wrestled a match in wall since last year. Uh when he got beat up by uh Sheamus. Uh so yeah, it may be he, he may be like a Undertaker type thing be there for several occasions, but he's going to be there more times than The Undertaker. There's even rumors that Undertaker may be there at Vengeance 2. Yeah, Shawn Michaels. Now, Shawn Michaels, the reason he'd probably be there just to promote an upcoming WWE DVD, which would be uh, great. It's called WWE Greatest Rivalries, uh, Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels. It's going to take a look into the rivalry, take a look in their greatest matches, Talk about the Montreal screw job, which us wrestling fans at this point has had enough to hear with it. What's done is done. 1996, 1997, move on. But uh, they will be talking about that in the DVD. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin got a new DVD coming out as well. That's coming out after Thanksgiving. Um, and as for Jim Ross, he's he feels that he won't be on weekly TV anymore. He's just going to stick to being behind the scenes. Uh, he was on wall this past Monday night. Yeah, that was his last appearance. Huh? Yeah, that may be his last appearance in a while. He's not going to be on every single week. So the commentary on wall will go to Jerry Lawler and Michael Cole. Son of a bitch. I hate that prick. And on the pay-per-views, it's going to be Cole, Lawler, and Booker T. So, and... See, I think, I, 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 I absolutely think that JR should be doing the pay-per-views. He's probably going to be doing uh, a WrestleMania next year, which, by the way, tickets go on sale for WrestleMania November 5th. Where is WrestleMania? It Miami, will be in right? Miami, Florida in, the, uh, in uh, April. And it will be Cena versus Rock for that Hopefully event. Hopefully for the WWE Championship. Yeah, Cena's got to win back the belt first, and he gets this chance this Sunday night. Got an interview coming up with Amanda. She Which will... Jack Russell's barking in the background. That would be Snurt. Snurt? Yes. What kind of a name is that? That's my family, man. Snurt? Yes, yeah, Snurt. Another oh one. Oh, my God. The other name is Kimmy. And That's a... okay, but Snurt? Okay, anyway, our guest is calling in right now. You're lucky. I wanted to get the name of that, <laughs> how that, that happened. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, our guest at this time is the blood thirsty vixen Amanda. She's joining us right now on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. And since you are in the West Coast, Amanda, let me say good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you and to everyone listening. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Doing real good. And we want to thank you for being our guest of Triple Threat Wrestling Radio this evening slash Thank afternoon. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Now, 
you you have a nickname, the bloodthirsty vixen. So I yeah. want so I want to know. Uh, you know what? Let's just that's my other name. I don't want to say nickname. That sounds kind of kind of childish. It's my other name. Okay. Well, well. Let me ask you this: What made you name yourself the bloodthirsty vixen? The bloodthirsty vixen. That that name came about. I guess about a few years ago, I did a, a um, the XPWX show it was a reunion show, and I was um, valeting the hardcore homo angel, and I got to do some pretty way out spots. Um, and ever since then, I've been wanting to to kind of test the the hardcore deathmatch deathmatch scene, and I have I had I didn't get the opportunity. Um, I thought XPW um, was going to return, and it didn't return. Um, so I was just bloodthirsty. I've been waiting and been dying to get into one of these one of these type of matches, and it didn't start happening until recently. Um, I got my taste, and I've just been having these death matches just about every month. Um, and that's why I call myself the bloodthirsty victim because I've been bloodthirsty for several years. Um, and I would say, I guess I think it was August of '09 when I had my first taste of a hardcore scene, and I've just been dying since then. And 2011 is here, and I've just been tearing it up in the hardcore scene. All right. Of all the guests that we have interviewed, you're the first that I can recall that actually likes being in these type of matches. Do you think that more female wrestlers should get into these hardcore matches? Do you think more companies should consider I, being in these type of I, matches? It, if that's your thing, I don't see why not. You know, I, I there's a handful of women that actually do this kind of stuff, um, like Mickey Knuckles, Lou Fisto. I can go on and on, and these women are amazing in the ring. Um, they bring it, and they bring it even harder than the guys. But, I mean, I, I don't want to sit here and say, oh, all women should be in it. But, I mean, if that's your thing, go for it, you know? I mean, go for it, and you have to have a set of balls to do something like this. It's it's not something you can walk in and out of, like a regular match. But, I mean, I, I, I like doing it. So, if that's your thing, then go for it. Well put. Um, there's been a lot of talk in the wrestling world about the Scott Hall story on ESPN E60 yesterday. Did you, by any chance, watch it? And if so, what was your thoughts? No, no, I actually haven't been able to watch or sit down and watch TV. Um, it's it's kind of, I've been busy at home right now just getting things done and stuff. So I'm not able to actually sit down and catch up on anything. Well, it, and to avoid giving too much away, let's just say it's, very compelling and very heartbreaking for what this man has been through. Um, I'm not going to give too much of it away. It's, it's a very compelling and it's a very heartbreaking story from a guy who was once in his prime still trying to um, stay alive at this point. Uh, mm, okay, okay. I did hear something about that, but I don't think it, it I don't think it has anything to do with what happened last night that I heard about. But I, but I mean, I, He's not the only person that's struggling, um, but I mean, best wishes to him. I hope everything everything turns out fine. He's a strong guy, so he got his things together. I hope so. That's pretty much what we all hoping for at this point. Um, yeah. So Amanda, you got a big match coming up this weekend uh, in a hardcore casket match against Mickey Knuckles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, up in um, Illinois. I'll be out there this weekend. Saga, Illinois. It's um, underground wrestling. Um, and it's, it's going to be at the Pops Nightclub concert venue. And bell time is 7 for those of you in the area that are listening. Um, it's it's going to be exciting. I've been in several matches with Nikki Knuckles. And, and it's a little feud that I got going with her that's been all over from the west to the east coast. And I guess this is probably going to be our last match or at least my last ma my last death match for a while because I gotta slow down this, this stuff is crazy but I mean it's <laughs> I'm really excited because I cannot fucking wait I want to like leave LA right now and take my ass to Illinois already so, I mean this is exciting I can't wait 
<laughs> <laughs> so if you're in the Illinois, check it out. Amanda taking Bell on. Bell time is at 7 p.m., guys. Bell time is at 7 p.m. You can get your tickets at Ticketmaster, and you know, in your area, local area. Um, come down and support. Come down and support the ladies, and of course the guys in the car. It's gonna be a badass show. There you go. Uh, Mickey Jane, Mickey Knuckles taking on Amanda in a hardcore casket match this weekend. If you're in the Illinois, Illinois area, go check it out. And I watched the first match that you two have on YouTube. That was an amazing match. So y'all going to tear the roof off in, uh, this weekend. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Let me ask you this. What is your thoughts on the Divas and the Knockouts as of right now? Um, I, I, I don't want to, um, I don't, you know what, it's kind of difficult. I, I respect both, both divisions. Um, I wish I was part of either one. Um, but I mean, I don't want to sit here and, and knock on the Divas because I know there's a few girls on the roster that are, you know, that are currently there that are hard fucking workers. So, but if I were to speak here and, like, you know, talk, talk about certain girls that work there that are fucking horrible, I don't, you know, I don't want to, like, I don't want to send any mixed messages, you know. I do believe that they all work as hard as, you know, they work just as hard as me or anyone else in the business. It's not easy to go, to get in the ring and, and just do a lockup or to take, even take a bump. Um, but, I mean... My heart right now is with TNA and the women in TNA. I totally love what they have going right now. Um, but, I mean, I don't want to, like, knock on any of the ladies. I hope they all get to do their thing, and they all, you know, I hope they all get their 15 minutes of fame. Um, I'm waiting for my 15 minutes of fame, just like the rest of the women out here in the Indies. Um, but, I mean, good luck to both, both divisions. I, I, I respect and I like what both are doing right now. For those who just joining us, this is Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Our guest at this time is the bloodthirsty Vixen Amanda. Vixen Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> Trying to make sure I get it all out there in one. Uh, so let me ask you this. And we have had a couple of guests in the past that you may be familiar with. Lucky O'Shea and Tara Calloway. Mm -hmm. You've had matches with yeah. both ladies. Um, oh yeah, I see. I see both of them up all over the place. Uh, what's it like um, having matches with those two ladies? Wow, a learning experience. Um, I love working with both ladies. Both ladies are nice. We I love their energy. Um, both of them have positive energy, and that's like the first thing I look for when I meet someone. Is well, before I actually meet them, because you know when you walk into a locker room, you see everyone, and you, you know you're walking around shaking hands. So I'm actually like a step ahead. Like I'm shaking someone's hand, but I'm actually paying attention to the next person, to the person I'm going to shake right after that person. But I like to to feel their energies, and and these two ladies, um, both their energy is positive. They're awesome. Lucky O'Shea, I've had a few. You know, I've had a really amazing feud with that girl. Um, my little coming out party with her, and then Tara Calloway, I had another cool feud with her that just recently had to had to die out. Um, but I mean, I like working both girls. Um, I'm able to do whatever it is I want with both girls. Neither of them have a limit. So, um, both bitches are fucking badass. Those are some bad bitches. There you go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a, that's a, that's a way to put it there. Um, let me ask you this. Is there any wrestlers that you haven't wrestled against that you would like to have a, like a dream match against as any oh okay well um Sarah Del Rey of course I mean I don't know if we all know that but I put it out there several times I would totally love to wrestle Sarah Del Rey cheerleader Melissa that's another one um oh my god Alice in Danger um I can go on you guys it just, um these women I look up to I really like I didn't know about them you know before I you know before I I didn't know anything about these women until I started working the Indies. And I started working the Indies, of course, because I doing my research on women and finding out more things about them. And I love the way they work. I love Selda Ray's work. Her work is immaculate. Um, I love the way she moves. Um, someone else who I would fucking die to work is Jazz. 
Um, I love the way she moves. I would totally kill to be in her booth. Um, it's sad. I, you know, it's sad. Fucking, her fucking work is amazing, dude. And I feel like I'm Mark putting these women over. But, hey, fuck it. I'm a total women's wrestling mark. That's why I fucking love doing it. Um, but, yeah, the, 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 all those ladies that I named are, are my, my the main girls I really, really want to work um, you know, as soon as possible. So any bookers out there looking for a five-star match, you know those women can bring it. I can bring it. Let's make it happen, guys. Let's make it happen. I wish we had some promoters listening right now, but if they are, you know, make it happen. Especially yeah. Amanda versus Dare Ray. That would be a killer. That would be a great oh, match. Oh, yeah. You, you bet. You bet it will. So why don't you go ahead and tell the listeners your 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 Facebook links, Twitter links, or any other links you have. Going. Yeah, um, you guys can just Google me, Google Mariah Moreno, um, Google Bloodthirsty Vixen. All the links to my Facebook, MySpace, Twitter are there. Or you can visit Santino, D-R-O-S, SantinoBros.com. Um, look for my little profile area. Go to Wrestlers, look for Amanda. Also, there are more links to, to those, um, look to my Facebook, MySpace, and all that. Um, that and also, guys, check out MexPW.com. M-E-X-P-W.com. Um, very interesting. For those of you that are interested in looking for work, send in your stuff. Um, check out MexPW.com. Um, and that's it. I mean, SantinoBros.net.com, either one. And that's how you guys can find me. All right. Her Twitter page is twitter.com backslash bloody vixen. Uh, yeah. And her Facebook link is on there. So you can follow her on Twitter and like her fan page. And definitely. Yeah, and don't just like me. Don't just follow me and don't just like me and don't just add me. Talk to me. Send me a message. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you guys want to see. Don't just. Don't just take up space on my Facebook, please. Talk to me, all right? <laughs> hey, she's, she said it. You know, she, she likes to talk to her fans, obviously. So, you know, go out and like her. And uh, and not just like and follow, but talk to the woman. Talk to the yeah. woman. Yeah. All right, Amanda. All right, Amanda. Before we end this interview, I asked all guests to do this. It's called our station ID, like a voice drop. All you have to do is say your name, and right after you say your name, you say you are listening to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. All right. <laughs> this is the Bloodthirsty Vixen Amanda, and you are listening to Triple Threat Radio. That's Triple Threat oh, Wrestling God. Radio. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. We, we, we'll try it again. We'll try it again. All right. Uh, okay. Triple Threat Fucking Radio? <laughs> That's Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Yes, oh, Wrestling yes, Radio. Triple threat fucking all right, radio. all right. Uh, all right, here we go. This is Amanda, your Bloodthirsty Vixen, and you are listening to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. I think Jeff liked Triple Threat Fucking Radio, too, but uh, we'll take yeah. that, well, too. I, you know what? I love saying the word fucking. If you listen to my promos, I'm always saying Fucking, 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 or even in my matches, I'm just like fucking, fucking, fucking. Well, you my know, favorite you word ever. You know something? If you listen to any of my sports talk radio shows that I do Monday through Friday, I say the word fucking all my shows. <laughs> then I fucking love you. I fucking love you. And I think you're fucking awesome. <laughs> That's a cool fucking deal right there. <laughs> That's motherfucking right, homie. <laughs> that's 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 beautiful. Um, the, no FCC. We can just do whatever we want. You know, internet and radio at its finest. Uh, that's right. So thank you, Amanda. Great talking to you. Good luck in your match against Mickey Knuckles. Thank you. And um, best of success goes out to you. Thank you for your time. You have a good night. Thank you. You guys too. Thank you very much. Good night, guys. All right. That was the bloody thirsty vixen, Amanda. Oh, I just say it this way: the bloodthirsty fucking vixen, Amanda. There you go. <laughs> On to our TNA Impact portion of the show, and then we'll get to uh, the Vengeance pick 'em. Uh, and not only I'm gonna go over the matches, but I'll give you how long they lasted. 
uh, the pre-show for the TNA Bound for Glory pay-per-view this past Sunday night. Mexican America defeated Inc. Incorporated to retain the tag team titles. And that match lasted eight minutes and two seconds. Eight minutes? And two seconds. Austin and then the show started with Austin Aries versus Brian Kendrick. Austin Aries won that match, retained his X Division title, and that match lasted 10 minutes and 28 seconds. RVD defeated Jerry Lynn in a full Metal Mayhem match, and that match lasted 13 minutes and 15 seconds. The shortest match of the evening goes to Quim- Hogan and Sting. Nope. Damn. Crimson versus Samoa Joe versus Matt Morgan. Crimson won the match. That match lasted 7 minutes and 14 seconds. Not very long matches, huh? <laughs> you know why? Because these old fucking guys can't go long. Well, these not old people, actually. Crimson, Joe, they're not old. But the... Uh, the let's see. Mr. Anderson defeated Bully Ray in the Falls Count anywhere Philadelphia street fight that happened to be the longest match of the night and it's not even in the main event that match lasted 14 minutes and 33 seconds um Velvet Sky your favorite knockout Jeff won the fatal four way to win her first ever knockout championship yeah that match uh she defeated Winter Mickey James and Madison Rain. Um, AJ Styles made Christopher Daniels quit in the I quit match when he was about to shut but to use a screwdriver on him and that was when Daniels decided to call it a day that match lasted 13 minutes and 42 seconds now Sting defeated Hulk Hogan that match lasted 9 minutes and 43 seconds. And Hulk Hogan tapped out. And what happened was the West of the Moto beat the crap out of Sting. And Eric Bischoff's son was the special guest referee. Eric Bischoff told his son, make sure Hulk Hogan wins. Well, Sting put the Hulk Hogan in the Scorpion death lock the submission like the sharpshooter and he had no he was Hogan was tapping out he had no other choice but to ring the bell in the match Sting wins and not only did it beat up uh, Sting but it beat up Eric Bischoff's kid the referee did they really yeah Eric Bischoff beat up his own son what kind of father is he <laughs> exactly and the main event, Kurt Angle defeated Bobby Roode to retain the World Heavyweight Championship. How long was that match? An hour and ten minutes? Nope. Because the rest of the fucking matches weren't long at all. There was eight matches took place. And this match lasted uh, 14 minutes and 15 seconds. So yeah, don't expect their main events to be as long as WWE. They're, man, each match, you know, those big matches in WWE, man, they last fucking 20 minutes, 25 20, minutes, 20, 30 hour. minutes. Yeah, 30, 20, 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. Um, so there Shit, you go. Shit, I could wrestle for seven minutes, for <laughs> You sure about that? Yeah, I'll just run around the ring. Let him try and fucking catch me for seven minutes. <laughs> And I'll uh, just fall on the ground and let him pin me. Oh, and uh, tonight Impact is going to uh, talk about the fallout from this pay-per-view. Oh, and Kurt Angle, he cheated to beat Bobby Roode. He had his hand on the rope for leverage, went for the pinfall. Referee did not see it. So uh, Bobby Roode, 13 years, did not win the, the title. Uh so it's going to be interesting to see what's next for Kurt Angle, considering he's got the Olympics he wants to train for. He's not going to be champion for long because he's going to have to eventually start training a lot more for the Olympics if that's what he really wants to do. Um. So yeah, TNA is tonight. They'll have the fallout from it from the pay per view. 
Um, and there you go. That was your impact update. Yeah, Jeff is getting older and he can't last that long. <laughs> hey, shut the hell up. Kurt is getting older and he can't. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, Kurt. Oh yeah, then he shouldn't be fucking wrestling, he's, should he? He's he's in his forties, but Hulk Hogan and Flair and Sting they're in their fifties. Fucking bunch of and, douchebags. So, so yeah, they got a lot of elderly wrestlers, and I mean, if you're gonna have a good match or main event match, it should be the longest match of the night. Or maybe I've just been watching WWE too long, and I don't get a chance to watch TNA. They may have had longer main events than 14 minutes, but uh, that's not the case right now. If you're going to have your main event, it should be the longest match of a pay-per-view. Now, it may not be the longest match of a televised show, maybe Impact, you know, because it's a two-hour show and you got to squeeze people in and out and stuff. And Fozzie was talking about Kurt, not you. Uh... Yeah, uh, there's a... Thank you for the story, Andrew. Um, Wani from the Jersey Shore is going to be on Impact November Big 3rd. Big deal. They love these... Uh, yeah, because yeah. it brings in the young kids. <laughs> this is the third Jersey Shore cast member in over a who year. Who gives a shit? They had uh, Angelina, who used to be on the show. They had... Snooki? No, Snooki was in WWE. Uh, Snooki was in WWE. Uh, they had Angelina, who used to be on the show. And speaking of Jersey Shore, for those who give so damn, it is their season finale tonight. Just read that on MTV News as I was looking for news for chilling. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> Old timer impact wrestling. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they should. You know, they, it's funny. They call the company, they still call the company top. Non-stop action wrestling. Yeah, they don't call they don't call the Thursday night TNA. They call it Impact Wrestling. Where they used to call it TNA Impact Wrestling, but now they just call it Impact Wrestling. But the company is still called TNA. I thought they were changing the name, not just of the Thursday show, but of the entire the whole thing, everything. They still they still call their championships TNA. You know, TNA knockout title, TNA tag team title. Um, and I hear there's a former diva slash former knockout coming back to TNA. Gail Kim. Oh, God. Uh, she quit the WWE back in August because she wasn't, quote, getting airtime. Yeah, good luck trying to get airtime in the knockout division. They are packed. Mickey James, Angelina Love, Madison Rain, Velvet Sky, who's the new champion, Winter, Sarita, Rosita, Tess Mocker, Terror. How you gonna get airtime over those knockouts? Now, she does, she this is her second stint in TNA. Uh she was the first ever knockout champion back in two thousand and seven. Yeah, good luck trying to you know, move up the ranks there. Because, like Amanda, and I will agree, TNA has the better woman division right now. You know, WWE, all they have is Beth Phoenix, Natalia, and Eve. And I guess you can put Kelly Kelly. You know, she keeps improving, but their diva division is not as strong as it once was. They just need to start looking for more talent right now. At least on the diva division. Everything else looks good, but the Divas division is not as strong as it once was. So now we're getting to the last five minutes of the show. Let's go ahead and make our picks for the uh, Vengeance pay-per-view. And we're going to start off with the ladies. Divas Championship on the line. Eve Torres versus Beth Phoenix. I think Beth Phoenix wins, but I'd like to see the Eve Torres. Eve Torres, whatever the fuck her name is. Eve Torres. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, they just simply call her Eve anyway. Um, if Eve Torres wins, she'll be the first ever three-time knockout cha- uh, the first ever three-time Divas champion. Excuse me. 
I'm going to go with Beth Phoenix as well. She just won the belt almost two weeks ago. And with this whole Divas of Doom storyline, I think she's going to be in for a long title reign. Uh, Michelle McCool. I, yeah, why not? Br- I want to see Michelle McCool back because at least she gave the, the Divas division some balance. I hate that bitch. But uh, she's not coming back anytime. She's not Good. coming back. She's done. She made it clear. She's going to. She's retired. So Was she, she going to go over to TNA? No, she says she's retired for wrestling for good. You know. Yeah, I bet you it wasn't her fucking decision. Well, it was her decision. She says she, you know, her time was up. She, you know, woman's career in the WWE don't last very long anyway. But she had an impressive career. Uh, so yeah, I'm going with Beth Phoenix as well. Tag Team Championships on the line. Air Boom, the other Ebony and Ivory team, going up against Ziggler and Swagger. And it will be for the Tag Team titles. Yeah, I'm going to go with Air Boom because I don't think they're going to let uh, Ziggler or Swagger, whichever one, have two belts. Yeah, Ziggler, he will be the first guy to have U.S. title and Tag Team titles yeah, since I don't the Miz. Yeah, they're going to let that happen. Uh, later, Ebo. And I'm going to go with Air Boom as well. Ziggler and Swagger has been up and down. And I think that trend is going to continue. Uh, Here's the only champion that won't be defending his title. Intercontinental champion Cody Rhodes take on uh, Randy Orton. Um, It was Cody Rhodes that put the body bag on Orton's face a couple of weeks ago. So Randy Orton gets... Some revenge, even though the Intercontinental title will not be put on the line. Who you got, Orton or Cody? I'm going to assume you're going for uh for Orton. Who you got, Jeff? Uh, Randy or, or Cody? Randy. I'm going to go with Randy as well. Um, Next match, Triple H and CM Punk taking on Miz and R-Truth. Um, I'm going to go with Miz and R-Truth. I don't see uh, Triple H and CM Punk getting along. They're going to beat the crap out of those two. <laughs> you, so obviously you're going for Hunter and, and Punk. I'm going to go with Miz and Truth. At least they'll get along. And I just don't see, I just don't see it. I just don't. On to the semi-main event. Mark Henry takes on Big Show for the World Heavyweight Championship. It will be Big Show's first pay-per-view appearance since Money in the Bank back in July. Uh, Mark Henry putting the gold on the line. Who you got, Big Show or Mark Henry? I'm taking um, uh, Randy Orton. I mean, Big Show, Big Show, Big Show. Big Show. Um, This is a toss-up to me. I'm going to go with Big Show as well. The comeback story, coming back from injury. I'm going to go with Big Show. Yeah, I'm taking a Big Show on that too. And our main event, Alberto Del Rio taking on John Cena for the WWE title. Alberto Del Rio won the title back in Hell in a Cell, but John Cena was not the one that got pinned. He pinned CM Punk to win back the gold. And Bertha Del Rio, believe it or not, has never defeated John Cena. So this is, and this will be a last man standing match because Cena's team won this past Monday night. So who you got, Del Rio or Cena? I'm going with Cena. I'm going to go with Del Rio. He just won the belt. I don't see them. I see maybe WWE going to give him a push. On the title reign a little bit longer. You know, put him out there a little bit longer. I can't stand Dare Rio. But uh, I'm going with him to win. <laughs> so there, right. you, there you go. Those are picks for the Vengeance pay-per-view. I want to thank Amanda. I'm going to thank I'm going to thank Amanda for joining us tonight. Next week, we have Angelus Lane. Any pro wrestler from the Midwest. 
Um, so there you have it. We are done with tonight. Impact is coming up next for those who actually want to watch. Uh, thank you all for listening. Don't forget, Chilling with Jeff and Kenny C this Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And uh, we'll see you this Saturday on Chilling. We'll see you next week on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. You all have a good evening. Good night, everybody. <laughs>